Okay, we're live now. Uh, hello again, everyone, and welcome to this co-hosted webinar by Webhose and Sesam. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Uh, today, we'll be discussing using web data to predict financial movements to generate alpha and to create trading strategies. Uh, let me uh, introduce myself. I am uh, Shai Schwartz, and I'm the VP of Customer Success here in Webhost.io. That means that I uh, manage the uh, support, customer success teams, and our data operations. And that also means that I'm responsible for our team's and company's commitment to help our users in getting great business results by uh, ingesting quality open web and darknet data feeds. Uh, today, I have the honor of co-hosting this webinar with uh, Sylvain Forte, CEO of Sesam. Sylvain, so happy to have you with us today. Uh, will you tell us a few words about yourself? Thank you very much, Sai. Can you hear me well? Yeah, perfectly well. Go ahead. That's perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm the CEO of Sesam, a fintech company specializing in extracting insights for the investment world from uh, web data. Uh, we are a user of uh, WebOS data and rely on several partners in order to generate uh, analytics from text and to make use of them in investment decisions. And you'll see that we're a team of 40 people working with uh, large clients, financial institutions worldwide. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, uh, now that you got to know us a little better, let's uh, dive right in. Sylvain, please take it away. Thank you very much. Perfect, so I'm switching back to the right slides and let's dive in. So the goal was to briefly give you an introduction of what we're uh, doing and what are the goals uh, that we have when using web data as part of an investment decision process for banks, hedge funds, insurers, and uh, asset managers. We'll show you a specific use case uh, regarding the use of web data and especially webhost data in that context uh, to analyze a specific company, uh, which is Pfizer, uh, so the pharmaceutical company. And we'll, we'll dive very deep into not only um, uh, sentiment on the global company, but also we'll take a look at the underlying products, the CEO of the company, and we'll extract deep investment insight, such as environmental go governance and social insight. We'll, we'll, we'll finalize everything with a, a summary, and I, I'd like to also give an introduction as to what else is possible with these types of technology, and we'll finalize with a Q&A. So let's start with the introduction. Um, I'd just like to tell you a few words about Season as a company. Uh, we're a six-year-old uh, company founded in 2014, a 40-people team. We work on two different aspects. The first one is natural language processing technologies, meaning that we extract insights from massive amounts of web data in order to help clients um, get further information to make investment decisions, such as investing in a stock, uh, creating a hedging strategy, uh, creating a systematic portfolio, and, and the likes. We also provide machine learning and quant technologies, and I won't talk too much about this uh, uh, today, but please note that the types of data set that are extracted from the web can be very complex, and that machine learning technologies help build systematic signals in that context. Um, we have clients around the world, uh, the, the, the like of uh, Nomura or Milliman in Chicago or Societe Generale. So we work with a lot of, of different clients, uh, large institutions, uh, and most of them. Our offices are based in France, and we're also present in New York, Luxembourg, and Tunisia. So the first thing I'd like to tell you more about is the, the global industry we're in, which is called the industry of alternative data. Alternative data has been a very strong concept in the industry for around five years. It corresponds to investors looking for additional insights coming from data sources that had not previously been um, uh, leveraged in financial markets. The typical example that you can find in, in, in the press is satellite image. Counting the number of cars that are present on a parking lot for a, spe a specific mall in order to further predict the future sales of that specific company. This is actually a common use case, but it's actually a bit more complex than that. Um, there, there are other types of data set that are used, such as weather data in order to predict soft commodities prices, uh, geolocation data, uh, credit card data, and in our case, social media data, websites, and news, uh, including coming from web posts. So that type of data is really the focus of interest. Our goal is to get greater volumes of data and information in order to further be able to forecast market movements and to get new sources of insight, information that no one previously had access to, either because that information was not available or because it was so massive that it was very hard to compute a global score, a global indicator to make a decision. Uh, please note that Alternative Data is currently a several billion dollar business and there are hundreds of different data sets that are available. If you'd like to know more, I'd be happy, happy to answer your questions. 
Um, Season provides a platform that is called Text Reveal. Text Reveal is a natural language processing engine that allows our clients to build by themselves and with the help of our team, factors and insights based on textual information. The first thing that you should note is that we have a huge data lake of information. We cover more than 8 billion documents, 2 million data sources, including news, blogs, forum, social media, and social trading, meaning also that we have access to data that is consumer-oriented, such as social media data, and more prof professional and large media data, uh, such as financial news data. Um, this is covered with uh, around 11 years of historical data now, this is actually very, very important in financial markets. Having a lot of history means that you can actually create historical simulations uh, of trading strategies in order to make sure that the insights that you have generated make sense and can be leveraged in the future uh, with, with table results. So the data link is one portion of, of text reveal, but the most interesting part is actually NLP algorithm, being able to generate insights from that type of data. The first thing that we have and that, that is very useful in that context is a knowledge graph. A knowledge graph is a representation of different entities, such as companies, brands, products, C-level executive, macro concept, risk factors that are all linked together. We have a knowledge graph for more than 50 million entities covering all listed assets, all listed companies. And in that context, we are able, when we are looking for information related, for example, to one specific company, to automatically detect information for each of the underlying brands, product, and C-level executives of the company, and much more. This is very useful and you'll see that in, in, in our specific uh, use case, because if you analyze a company like Pfizer, you don't want only to take a look at every article mentioning Pfizer, the full text search and the, the chain of characters. What you want to look at is all of the underlying entities, all of the subsidiaries of Pfizer in order to get a stable and relevant score. Once we have filtered the right articles and messages that are related to the entity that we are looking for using our knowledge graph, we're able to compute a lot of different analytics based on that data. Um, we compute volumes of named entity recognition counts, meaning the number of entities that we detect in order to get a trend in terms of how many times was the company or its product mentioned. We are also able to, to create sentiment analytics, um, saying, for example, that a company was mentioned in a very negative context by consumers, which could have a negative influence on stock later on. We're also specializing in emotions analysis, uh, which has a, a higher granularity. And an example of that is creating a fear uh, factor based on a community of traders sharing information about a specific stock. If you can imagine that a large number of traders are sharing uh, information that contains a lot of fear, it means that that could have an impact on, on the market price, obviously. And finally, we, we, we mix a lot of algorithm actually to create very custom scores uh, our vision is not to provide one data set for, for all types of, uh, of use cases, but rather to allow our clients to build on-demand factors. And in that context, one of our main current use cases is ESG factors, meaning information related to environmental, social, and government's impact of the company. And that is a very trendy topic, um, especially in the US and in Europe, um, because a lot of investors want to make sure that they're, the companies that they invest in are actually responsible and that there isn't too much environmental, social, or government risk involved in uh, investing in these companies. And we can do that in an entirely automated way, as I will show you uh, later on, using text review. Finally, that information is provided to clients uh, using dashboards, APIs, or flat files. And you should note that we deal with different types of clients. We deal with fundamental firms, discretionary firms, that have a long-term approach and take a look at the information from a visual state point. So they look at dashboards, but we also work with systematic hedge funds using APIs and flat files in a quantitative approach in order to generate systematic investment uh, trading signals using algorithms and, and not manually looking at the information. Shai, this is for you for talking about Webhost. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you very much, Sivan. Uh, super interesting. Um, and I'm really curious to see what uh, text reveal does with web data. Uh, here's Webhose in a nutshell. We are a web data provisioning company or a DAS, data as a service. We've been around since December 2015 and we're 30 engineers and committed team in our Tel Aviv headquarters. We crawl the surface web, the dark net and deeper dark web realms and we make the data available to retrieve in machine readable formats. We have more than 70,000 users nearly 30 terabytes of historical data, and more than 10 million documents scrolled per day. 
our bots continuously scan, structure, clean, index, and store the data in our uh, vertical content repositories and make it available to consume on demand. Now, the data is available to stream either filtered by tapping into our different endpoints and passing Boolean queries to match against, or simply everything per vertical through a Firehose connection. That would be all languages from all territories out there. We also offer historical data through either a self-served archive API or larger data sets if you need historical data at scale. For instance, if you're into building your own uh, archive of the web, like with text reveal. So whether you're a budding entrepreneur in need of web data to fuel your app or dashboard or social listening system, or you're a Fortune 500 company looking to stream uh, surface web or darknet content into your data lakes to feed your analytics engines, Webhose has the data for you. Back to you, Sylvain. All right, um, let's continue with our use case. And uh, again, this is a very specific use case. Um, it doesn't correspond to all functionalities of TechTreeville, but it's a good way to approach a specific deep company level analysis. So th this use case would be typically dedicated to a fundamental portfolio manager that is looking to acquire more insights related to a company that has specific questions and that information would not necessarily be available in uh, uh, public information or it, in its uh, existing uh, subscriptions to Bloomberg or Reuters or the likes. So we're looking at Pfizer, which is a pharmaceutical company. The first very, very first thing that we do is take a look at the information that we have. We conducted that study on a small portion of our data lake, around 1% of the data lake, seven, 75 uh, million articles and messages. And so we're taking a look at the information that we can gather. The way this works is we enter Pfizer Inc. as a company in the knowledge graph and our knowledge graph we will automatically augment the request by adding a lot of keywords, a lot of concepts that are related to Pfizer. In that case, you can see, for example, um, uh, some uh, drugs produced by Pfizer such as uh, uh, Sildenafil and, uh, for example, Viagra, which is also used uh, uh, at Pfizer. And so we take a look at the underlying information. Please note that we can display that information for clients, which is very useful, meaning that it doesn't need to be a black box. It can actually be analyzed and it can also be manually checked so as to address uh, the need to know what kind of information has created a specific indicator. So in, in that specific sort of portion of our data set, we see that most of the articles and messages are in English, followed by German, Spanish, and French. We have a large majority of news data, but we also have some blogs and discussions, meaning that we'll, we'll have some consumer data included and not only public uh, media coverage. So the first thing that we do is we take a look at, at global trends. Our, our final goal is to be able to some extent to, for, to forecast a, a global uh, price trend uh, on uh, Pfizer uh, uh, stock. So our first goal is to take a look at the global sentiment. To do that, we take all of the articles and messages that have been extracted using our knowledge graph. So all the ones that are related to the company, to the CEO of the company, but also to all of the underlying drugs. We mix everything, we don't filter in anything. We take consumer data and financial data and take a look at global trends. So the first thing that we can, we can see here is that there was a global negative sentiment trend. The sentiment is here displayed with the, with the blue curve, while the market price is displayed in the bar charts uh, in, uh, in green and, uh, and red. So you see here that there was an initial strong negative trend that has actually led quite quickly to a market uh, a decrease, a very strong market drop. And we're currently in, in a more bullish trend, so a more positive trend. And you'll see later on that indeed, we're, we're really entering a phase where, where the market is training up uh, for Pfizer. So at this stage, we see pretty good signs for the company. Without looking deep, we really see that we have a positive sentiment trend overall. That could be a good sign for the company. We're also able to take a look at, at volume information. So we, we dig further and we take a look at the numbers of articles and messages that we extract, the number of mentions of Pfizer and of Pfizer product uh, underneath. What, what this is useful for, and we'll, we won't dive deep into, into this in the presentation, but using these, these spikes, you can actually automatically identify events related to the company that can be market events, uh, that can be communications, but that can also be ESG related events. So for example, the company has been involved in a massive lawsuit or government's problem. We can detect that automatically using uh, these types of volume charts. So at this stage, we had some pretty good info on, on Pfizer. We know that the, the trend is quite positive. We, be, we may be able to leverage that, but we want to dive a lot deeper into these indicators. So the second thing that we do is we, we try to assess the 
um, uh, ESG risk of the company. The ESG risk meaning the environmental, social, government's vision of people related to Pfizer as a company. So what we see here is that in the environmental score, we'll be able to automatically detect concepts related, for example, to pollution, water management, energy consumption, waste, etc., cetera, um, and we'll be able to associate them with volumes of mention, but also with sentiment, so as to create a global environmental score for the company. So we see here that Pfizer has actually a, a very good environmental reputation. It is not mentioned a lot in the context of, uh, of, um, of um, uh, um, um, problems related to the environment. So that's a pretty good sign from an environmental perspective. So if you're looking to create a portfolio, including company that have a very good positive environmental impact or low environmental risk, Pfizer may be a good choice in that context. Um, the social score is actually a, a bit less reassuring. We, we see several aspects related to discrimination and strikes uh, on uh, Pfizer directly, and we see that the score is less than 50% in the way that it was computed. So we should take a closer look at that specifically. The last part is the government score. We see that the government score on Pfizer that was generated automatically is extremely low. Please note that the way the score has been created is on the one hand, we use our knowledge graph to identify information related to the company, its products and brands. And on the other hand, we, we use that same knowledge graph in order to identify automatically concepts and keywords linked to each of the underlying categories, such as conflict, antitrust, fraud, etc. Again, the knowledge graph allows us to expand the range of knowledge. When you're talking about fraud, there are a lot of concepts that are associated with fraud and you don't want to just query the fraud keyword in your data lake, that would be far too naive. And also you don't want an ambiguous request. So by, by making sure that we find co-mentions of the company or its entities or and uh, the risk factors associated in this case to government score, we're able to make sure that we find information related to a, a government's risk associated with the company and we can then compute a sentiment score in order to know whether that mention is in a positive or negative context. So the government score is very, very low here and we see three main aspects. Um, it is quite obvious that Pfizer has been accused of antitrust and fraud in the recent uh, years uh, uh, when we did that study. And there also a lot of mention of conflict. So we should expect the company to be involved in a lot of lawsuits, uh, to be a lot of uh, involved in a lot of, of patent abuses, uh, uh, lawsuits, and, and the likes. So this is very good knowledge. If you want to exclude any company that is that has a lot of governance problem, that has actually in that case quite a bad reputation uh, uh, regarding uh, its legal action, you should actually discard Pfizer from your portfolio. The next step is 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 diving deeper. So in order to dive deeper, we'll take a look at the trends on the company's products because we are able to directly analyze each of the company's products and to take a look at the global trends. So we're talking about drugs. So we're talking about drugs such as Lipitor, Lyrica, Diflucan, Viagra, Celebrex, et cetera, et cetera. Each of these drugs has been mentioned in the news or in blogs or in forums, and we're able to detect both the volumes of mentions and the tonality of the mention, meaning whether they were very positive or negative. A typical use case is taking a look at American consumer blogs and identifying concepts related, for example, to side effects on a specific drug. If you identify a very high growth of mention of, of side effect on a specific drug, that could be a very, very bad sign for that specific drug. So we see two interesting trends here on Lyrica and Zeljans. The good thing is Lyrica and Zeljans are quite new products for, for Pfizer. And we see that these drugs are actually growing very quickly, um, especially on Xelgens, we, we see that the volume of data is increasing extremely quickly. What that means is that means that a lot of people are mentioning that drug in the, in the press. We're not assessing whether they are, they are mentioning it in a positive or negative context, but at least we have some communication and there's a very high likelihood that this communication is highly linked to sales that are being made by the company. So this is rather a positive side for the, sign for the company. Its new drugs are go growing quite quickly. We'll, we'll, we'll finalize this study by, by taking an even closer look at one of the specific drugs, which is the most, most recent one, uh, Xelgens. As you can see here, we can track in real time the launch of Xelgens and the increase of volumes of data throughout time. We see the very large spikes links, linked to announcement related to Xelgens in uh, August 2019 and July 2019. And on the bottom of the screen, we also see concepts regularly associated with Xelgens, such as recovery, side effects, 
satisfaction of consumers or disappointments of, uh, of customers. And we see that there is a very large majority of satisfaction expression in the context that we're looking at, and there aren't, there aren't so many mention of side effects. So that's quite a, a good sign, again, for the company and specifically for that new drug that can explain the quite positive review that we're seeing on the right uh, of the screen. Not everything is perfect. There, there is information that we should dive a lot deeper in, and we would be able to do that by just clicking on that specific bar related to side effect and taking a look at each underlying article, filtering the information, taking a look at the spikes in our very, very modular environment. So in, in this context, what we've been able to do, uh, and that was a brief overview, but we've been able to look first at the contents that we were, that were available. So web host context, uh, contents and other partners' contents. Uh, we were able to take a look at what is the data that we are analyzing, making sure that it's relevant, making sure that we properly detect the entities, the company, the brand, the products related to the company. In a second step, we are able to generate company level trends and to take a look at the sentiment and the volume of the company in order to take a macro look at what are the current uh, trends in that specific market and to compare it with market prices. In the third step, we've been able to dive very deep uh, into ESG risk analytics so as to make sure that we don't have specific risk on the company and we detected a specific risk on the government score. And finally, we took a look at the products and we were able to, to see very, very positive trends on the product growth uh, at a company level. So overall, we, we have quite a good vision on, on Pfizer. There, there are some scandals and there are some lawsuits with the company, but the overall trend is very positive. And it is actually very common in the industry of pharmaceutical to be involved with a lot of government's problem and a lot of, of lawsuits and, and scandals and the like. So we've been able to use alternative data in order to detect early trends, early trends on prices, but also early trends on sales of the company in order to make these investment forecasts. Um, natural language processing as a technology has helped us actually generate the insight. The raw data is not that useful. We, are, we need the knowledge graph, we need the sentiment analysis, we need name and entity recognition in order to make sense of that data and in order not to extract information that is redundant or ambiguous. Um, finally, we, we also see that targets can be companies, brands, products, or C levels. I haven't talked about C levels in this presentation, but that would have we would have been able directly to generate a score uh, on the, on the CEO of Pfizer. But please note that that we can explore other asset classes. We're doing a lot of asset allocation, forex trading, risk hedging, ESG scores on at index level, etc. So we're not specifically limited to companies in that context. As long as we have an, an entity that we can identify, we're able to generate these types of score in a very modular way. Um, you'll, you should also note that for ESG or impact, uh, one of the strengths of natural language processing uh, um, uh, compared to any other type of ESG risk indicator is that it can generate alerts, controversies in real time. Um, ESG factors currently have a very strong lag, uh, several months, up to six months actually, before knowing that an event actually appeared and having an impact on the score. And with natural language processing technologies, we're able to compute these scores in real time to generate alerts and to know extremely quickly that there was suddenly a government scandal on a company. So it helped us detect a positive general sentiment trend and good traction on the company's products. We still have some negative trends on the ESG side as we see that the company is involved with several scandals. They haven't had any direct impact on the price, but we should, we should take a look at a longer term trend for that. Uh, this study was conducted a few years ago, and we actually identified a 10.7 increase of Pfizer stock price over a four months period right after the study. So the trend was actually confirmed, and we had a, a pretty decent movement afterwards, linked obviously to the global sentiment of the company, but also a lot on the company's sales that we are able to identify uh, uh, prior to um, uh, the latest uh, announcements of the company. So th this was a, a, a short use case that was created automatically in actually less than two hours. So our goal is, is not to have a platform to address one specific use case, but rather to have a platform to address all use cases. We're able to generate very, very deep analytics uh, on text. And as you see, this can be leveraged in a number of different use cases. We're working with hedge funds, investment managers, um, banks, but also with private equity firms and VC firms that look at investment trends from more uh, a general perspective. Um, I'd love to hear all of your questions and happy to continue the discussion. 
Yeah, th thank you very much, uh, Sylvain. First of all, uh, chapeau. Thank you very much for this uh, fascinating use case that you've shared with us uh, today. Our marketing teams uh, are gathering the uh, questions as they uh, keep on, on coming up on the uh, on the widget. Uh, by the way, feel free to uh, keep them coming. We'll be we'll try to answer everything uh, right now. And if we didn't get your question, uh, we'll send you um, uh, answers later on. But really, really thank you for this uh, fascinating use case, uh, Sylvain. Um, maybe, maybe let's start with, um, yeah, with, with this question that, that seems to be repeating itself. Um, I understand that you also work with uh, investment firms uh, that create trading signals automatically, so a quantitative systematic investment. Um, how do you typically generate trading strategies? Or um, I guess the question is essentially, how do you drive performance out of this great web data that you're using with Text Reveal? Yeah, indeed, that, that's a very good question. Um, uh, fundamental firms are, are usually using that type of web information in order to gather additional insights, in order to um, uh, confirm a decision that they are making or in order to engage in due diligence. But quantitative firms are looking at this data from a time series perspective. It is a factor, such as a factor uh, derived from uh, market data, that they can automatically include in their algorithm in order to uh, generate systematic trading signals and live strategies. So the, the way we provide that data to clients in that case is through an API, in order to get a number of observations uh, per day on a long history, in order to backtest everything, etc. But please note that we also provide a specific product for that, which is called Signal Reveal. Uh, which is a data science alpha research platform so that our clients can integrate any number of time series factors into the analytics and build training strategies using machine learning technologies. And our clients are using that obviously on our data, but also on market data or on other types of data sets such as credit card data, for example. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this. It's really interesting to see how you um, uh, detect trends, ESG, and essentially drive uh, performance uh, uh, using uh, web data in, in less than two hours, you said, right? Exactly, exactly. It's a very, very quick. We, our focus has always been to build the underlying technology so that our clients have a lot of transparency and a lot of control over the technologies rather than having to work from a, a specific use case that they have very little control over. So we give our clients a lot of control. We share source code. We share a lot of technology so that you can build analytics that very much correspond to your specific portfolio, your specific use case and your specific investment vision. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, again, to do that, you need quality web data at scale and it has to be uh, uh, with good uh, signal to noise ratios and, and relatively uh, uh, clear and structured. Uh, let's proceed with a couple of uh, web host questions. Uh, web host, how do you deal with sites that don't wish to be crawled or, or paywalled articles? Well, uh, actually we don't. Uh, Webhose, or actually uh, Omgili Bot, our user agent, is probably the nicest uh, crawler you'd stumble upon on the surface web. We always ask for permission uh, to scan a website. We comply with the sources that we visit, so uh, no paywalled or gated content. And we'd always respect uh, robots.txt files, uh, crawl delay, no, no index tags, and so on. Uh, we also make sure that we do not put unnecessary stress or we're hammering uh, or overloading the sources that we scan. Instead, Webhost aims at, a more, at creating a more uh, symbiotic, continuous data stream from the sources that we're visiting. Um, another Webhost question about the volumes. How much data do you scan daily? Um, over, over 10 million news articles, blog posts, user-generated reviews, uh, discussion threads, and user comments. That's the daily number, and the numbers uh, uh, keep on rising, of course. That's increasing by the day. And I'm only, we're only discussing uh, open web today, right? This is only uh, open web or surface web. Darknet data is very uh, different by uh, nature and requires uh, other, uh, other or added technologies. Uh, what type of entities does Webhost extract? We extract uh, locations, organizations, and persons from English news and blog posts. Uh, Sylvain, can you tell us more about uh, knowledge graphs and linking entities such as uh, brands or the... Uh, yeah, linking knowledge graph, knowledge graph and linking entities with uh, brands, C-levels, and a company. Sure, it's actually one of the key topics in organizing that kind of data and making sure that we access the, the right contents. Um, we, we have, as I mentioned, a knowledge graph of more than 50 million entities that contain a lot of relationships. Uh, that relationship, for example, are 
this person is the CEO of that company. But more than that, we are able to um, focus on point in time analysis saying this person has been the CEO of that company from that time to that time. And now it's another person that is the CEO of the company. Meaning that when we create a time series corresponding to a sentiment score in a company, we're able to use each of the corresponding CEO for the period of time. So that knowledge graph is really, really huge. And one of, of our strengths is also being able to leverage that knowledge graph, not only to detect information related to companies, but also related to concepts, to commodities. The concept of oil, for example, as a commodity, a brand crude oil, is linked to a lot of different companies, a lot of different concepts, a lot of different uh, uh, chemical for formulas uh, that we're able to extract. And our goal is also in, in entity linking and disambiguation to make sure that we have the right information. Um, extracting information related to Apple as a company um, is actually a non-naive task as you have to make sure that you identify not uh, not only uh, the raw article, but you make sure that you don't uh, mix uh, Apple as a company with the fruit Apple. And that is a very uh, computer intensive task uh, that, we that we perform internally in order to make sure that our clients can automatically detect the right entities and generate the right data sets without having a lot of noise in them. Right, right, right. Thank you. Very interesting. Uh, Sylvan, how do you work with your clients? Do you provide the standard solutions or, or custom projects? We, we actually do both. We provide uh, text reveal and signal reveal as standard products. Our clients access the technology directly in a very uh, a standardized way. Uh, we also focus a lot on transparency. So we give access to underlying technology, source code, uh, et cetera, so that clients can really build an analytics by themselves. But in some cases, we conduct custom projects for clients, and that is regularly the case for ESG projects. Uh, where we compute these factors based on the specificities of the client's risk metric. And so we spend a few months with each uh, of, uh, of these clients in order to uh, create these scores specifically. Mm -hmm. That's clear. Uh, Webhost, how quickly can Webhost be about adding a, a site to your coverage? Uh, well, that's easy, lightning quick. We take pride in our superior turnaround for new sources edition. Some so from, from a few seconds and up to maximum of 48 hours, it really depends on how well the system managed to match a parsing pattern to a source. Uh, yeah, that's a quick question, uh, question here uh, that seemed to be repeating itself. Is Reddit a web host source? Do you crawl web Reddit? Yeah, the answer is definitely yes. Web host is a, uh, Reddit is a web host uh, source. Maybe to add a comment to that, uh, please note that we use a lot of Reddit data actually for a crypto analysis. Mm -hmm. This is indeed interesting. Uh, another question about ESG or more question about ESG. What kind of emotions are you analyzing? Uh, how do you identify products, brands or ESG? Uh, by the way, in environment, social and governance, uh, for those of you who do not are not familiar with the uh, uh, term. Uh, so, how do you identify products, brands, or ESG factors? Uh, what kind of emotions are you analyzing? Okay, maybe let's start with emotions. We rely on, on um, uh, Ekman's emotions. Ekman is a famous uh, American psychologist. Uh, so, we have six different emotions, including fear, uh, surprise, and joy, for example. Um, we we've always feel like emotions provide more granularity than simple sentiment, and surprise is a good example of that. A surprise indicator is not necessarily negative or positive, but it does have a strong impact on market prices. Uh, with regards to um, ESG factors and the, and the way we, we compute these scores, uh, we're, we're looking for information that is in the same context as the uh, risk information that we're looking for. For example, if we're looking for a term related to uh, pollution, we won't necessarily look for the specific keyword of pollution, but we, we will, through embeddings and these kinds of technology, make sure that we find an article that is in that same context and that could be uh, 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 relevant to them. The last thing was uh, for product and brand information. Well, mm -hmm. basically our knowledge graph is, is extracting for us a list of keywords, a list of concepts automatically because the knowledge graph contains these brands and products information. After that information is made available, we just have to look uh, with a, a text search simply in the articles and messages. And then we have to make sure that that request is not ambiguous. So we use our entity linking and disambiguation algorithm so as to make sure that the things that we are extracting is exactly the right entity. A good example for that is when we're looking at a company information for a company like, like uh, Total in France, 
that keyword total the total is extremely ambiguous so we have yeah. to use our strongest algorithm to make sure that we're not extracting any keywords that does not correspond to the company itself and not to the keyword total which is a generic keyword right it's a very context related uh, extraction right yeah exactly exactly um from from a more machine learning perspective our focus is is precision uh there's always this this uh, balance between precision and, and recall we like to have information that is very precise that is not noisy and we like to make sure that we really identify the right entity and so we use these kind of disambiguation algorithm for that mm -hmm. excellent thank you so much um another a knowledge graph question how do you maintain the knowledge graph uh, for example when ceo changes it's actually an interesting question and the the answer is we don't do it ourselves uh, we're a knowledge graph aggregator meaning that we buy knowledge graph and we extract different kinds of knowledge graph so we extract information from a lot of different sources including wikidata crunchbase etc and we aggregate and make sense of that information and we have a specific data curation team in tunisia that is working on making sure that all of that information is point in time and up to date. So we, we, we don't try to generate knowledge graph automatically. While being AI expert, we don't trust technology at this stage to create that kind of structured information automatically. So we rely on existing structured databases that are point in time and updated either by a company or by a group of user. And we make sure that that knowledge graph is clean, up to date, and we update it ourselves when we need to for specific entities, but not for the whole database. Very clear. Thank you. A uh, couple of web host questions. How many languages do you support? What languages are covered? So yeah, 80 languages, pretty much every written language on the uh, World Wide Web. Uh, so yeah, around 80 languages in total. Um, what data is covered? What are the different verticals that web host uh, offers? So on the open web, uh, news, blogs, discussions, messaging boards, um, Q&A pages, social networks like um, uh, HN, Reddit that we've mentioned, the Chinese Baidu, the Russian VK, uh, Korean Naver, and uh, pretty much everything on the open web that allows uh, crawlers to scan their content. Uh, and also user-generated reviews for products and services uh, on the darknet. Uh, again, which we're not discussing today, uh, uh, Tor, I2P, ZeroNet, OpenBazaar, Blockchain DNS, uh, IRC, and other, I'd say, interesting uh, messaging apps. Uh, what's on the web hose uh, output? What kind of what kind of output should we expect for the Boolean uh, query? What's coming back from the web hose? Uh, RESTful APIs. So yeah, first of all, it, it, those endpoints are RESTful APIs. Um, uh, Firehose, which is everything we scan, is uh, different. Uh, and um, for the output, this is actually a great question. Um, another one, whether it's whether on the output it's everything in an article, blog post, or review, or just a snippet. So always the full text and title of an article, blog post, or review with web host. Uh, same goes for user comments uh, and also the author if our crawlers were allowed to pick it up from the source and publication dates language detection uh, domain rank uh, entity extraction that we do over English news and blog post um, and also nice sentiment analysis over that uh, the country and many many other there's a plethora of, of filters that you can use and pretty much everything on the web host output could be leveraged as a query filter if you are uh, using our different APIs to retrieve data all right, let me see what else do we have here. Uh, what would be the size of the entire archive, uh, WebHost archive? Uh, that's nearly, I think, 27 terabytes of historical data uh, currently. Yeah, for Sylvain, it says, oh, I saw some of these sources were in different languages. How are foreign sources applicable to US financial markets? Hmm. Yeah, we, 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 look, we, we look a lot at, at multi-language analysis. Um, we, we don't cover by ourselves 100 different languages for all different algorithms. We cover around 20 languages because some of the algorithms have to be created uh, in-house, um, such as specific NER algorithm or disambiguation algorithm. So we cover around 20 languages, with, which has been sufficient for uh, most of our use cases. And that, that, that covers most uh, main uh, uh, global languages, uh, such as 
obviously English, Chinese, Japanese, French, German, Spanish, uh, etc. But as our focus is precision, when we don't cover language, we try to avoid the information so as to make sure that we're not making a mistake or identifying the wrong entity. I see. Another one for uh, for you, Sivan. Uh, does uh, CESAM include direct alternative data, for example, satellite data, or do you only work with web data? That actually depends on our offering. Uh, text reveal is only on, on text data. Uh, I'm not saying only web data because we cover other topics such as earning calls, for example, or specific social training data that we extract information uh, uh, from, uh, or uh, uh, press releases from, from company that are not necessarily public. But text reveal is only text. Signal reveal is a very agnostic platform. It can include any type of time series. And as I mentioned before, these time series can be obviously text generated, but they can also be market data or geolocation insights or shipping data or credit card data. So Signal Reveal, the data science engine that allows clients to actually create final trading signals and to evaluate data set is, is very agnostic and, and doesn't rely solely on, on text data. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Another question here, are the news and content related only to financial topics? Definitely not. With uh, we, we scan the, the, the open web in general, so pretty much everything out there on the internet that allows crawlers to access content you would find with uh, web hosts. And also, Sylvain, I'm assuming, I mean, it's really hard to, I mean, there are some sources that you can distinguish as uh, financial, but I'm assuming you're using other data like news and blogs and many, many other sources for your analysis. Very, very true, and it's actually one of the goals of alternative data. If you're relying only on financial information to make financial decision, that means that you don't have necessarily forward-looking information. We're specifically looking at consumer information, deep information that no one has access to. And in that context, that type of data is very relevant for our use cases too. Um, you, you, I'm, I'm sure you've all heard about like companies using Bloomberg's or Reuters streams in order to make investment decisions automatically. The problem with that data is that everyone uses it, and if everyone uses it, that means that there is not, a, there isn't a lot of value left. It's become a, a question of latency, of speed, and not a question of analysis. Exactly. That, ex that explains that correlates with the hype we're seeing around uh, getting uh, web data at scale for your predictive analysis and also building your own uh, your own archive. We can definitely confirm that on the uh, demand side here. All right. I think we are running out of time, so we will recap here. Uh, thanks everyone for for attending, and we really hope to see you on uh, one of our next webinars. I have a feeling uh, it will include uh, darknet uh, data use cases, but judging by your questions here on the uh, widget, and also watch out for our emails within the next few days for this uh, webinar's recording, slide deck, and a couple of uh, more surprises that our marketing teams are, are working on right now. Uh, thank you very much, Ivan, for this. Uh, cheers, everyone, and I hope to see you soon on our next webinars. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.